Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Barry Rice. Hey, everybody. I'm here today. And Mac Daddy Pete Robertson. Hey, how are you? It's backwards. <laughs> I'm like, you're across from me and Barry's to the right of me. This is all my brain is going to be yes, going to explode. Yesterday, I introduced myself to a to an attorney and I was talking to him and I said, hey, I'm, I'm Pete or whatever. And then they were saying this and this and he goes, I'll probably never forget, forget uh, remember your name. I said, well, just call me Mac Daddy. My wife calls me Mac Daddy. He goes, Mac Daddy. Anyway, long and short, short, at the very end of the day, hey, Mac Daddy. I said, do you remember my name? Nope. <laughs> but so he remembered. Mac Daddy. Did you sing him the whole song? No, I didn't. My name is Mac Pete, preacher MC. The reason why. Jesus, you're letting me finish it. Now I'm done. <laughs> I haven't heard him in a while. I wanted to hear the song. Oh, wow. <laughs> I used to perform that with kids. When you're a youth pastor, uh, you do a lot of crazy things. You guys are both youth pastors. At heart. I would never <laughs> want to do it again in my life. <laughs> Those three o'clock in the morning wake up calls because your your youth like destroyed something or burnt something down or broke the windows in the church or whatever else uh, are not fun. Or getting the cops called and coming in the middle of the night because they're making too much noise and playing out there. Yeah, it's not fun. Or playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of stories. So you don't want to do that anymore. It's funny. That's, Barry was talking the other day about being a youth pastor and eating pizza all every day. That was like your main diet. That, that's all you eat. <laughs> yeah. That's you have, it. You have leftovers you have to eat it the next day. <laughs> I praise the Lord for those years and I pray for the Lord for those years in the past. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. still love youth. I still love hanging out with them. I just, I can't keep up with them. Yeah. You're getting old. It's just, they're, it's just difficult. It's it, called interns. Yes. Yes. Well, bring him on. Yes. Bring him on. So, so, hey, you know what starts this weekend? What? College football. Oh, you like football? My beloved Florida State Seminoles are undefeated going into this weekend. <laughs> I just asked Bob if he likes football. Uh, I like football, I lo- especially like college football. I used to like pro football, but I'm a Dolphins fan, and it's been like 30 years of misery, so... You know, I, I still root They're for him, but be okay this year. I think. That's what everybody says, but you know, who well, knows? We, I told my wife the other day. I said um, we were both exhausted, and she went to take a nap or something. And I just said, "Hun, um, it's football season." And she looks at us, and I was like, "I just can I please? I just I just <laughs> need this. Just give me some time." <laughs> and so I was able to pull it up, and I'm just like, "Ah, oh, this." I mean, it's therapy Who's your team? for me. Who's your team? I was just I don't have like. A team team? I mean, if like we talked about college, I mean, for yeah. me, it's USC. Right. The Trojans. South Carolina? No, the Trojans. Oh, oh, the other yeah, USC. Southern Cal. I have a new pro team. Whoa. Do you? The Commanders? It's the, it's the Titans. Why? Malik Williams. Oh, yeah. Willis. Yeah. From Liberty University, uh, the quarterback. The quarterback. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. He's playing for Tennessee? Yeah. Now he, he learned something new. I started not in a pregame. Okay. The preseason uh, game. Yeah. You got someone to root for. His now, brother can run and throw. See, I'm okay with like if you're if you're for it, I'm for it. Yeah, I don't have a pro team outside of the Rams, but the only reason why I have the Rams is because they won last year. No, oh, because sorry. I was brought up. We I went to the St. Rams Louis? games. You were brought up in St. Louis. No, when they were in California. <laughs> you're digging the hole even deeper. I'm not buying any of it. Hey, hey, he's got I thought you were. Piece. I thought you were a Raiders fan. I don't, I want to took you as a Raiders fan. I went to both, but Rams were at the Anaheim Stadium in, in Orange County, California. That's where we. That's where they. <laughs> How played. long have the Rams been in LA? Like two years. A long time. <laughs> Before St. Louis, they were in St. Louis. Short. They were in Ram, LA for that's since 64. true. When I was a kid, that's right. Yeah. The Rams were in LA, and then they that moved to St. Louis. Uh, yeah. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I apologize. It's okay. You forgive me. Yeah, they were okay. there forever. <laughs> my I whole did, childhood, they I were there. I did forget about that. I was yeah. thinking, yeah. And then the Raiders were there my childhood, too. They weren't in Oakland. They started in Oakland, came to L.A., came to LA. I and then went that. back to Oakland, Yep. and now they're in Las Vegas. Yep. For now. They're, they're West they're, Coast, basically. They're, West they're not going to go East. Yes. No. Not like the Rams. The Rams went East. Or far well, East. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. It's different still west time, of the Mississippi. Different time zones. Just barely, but they were still west of yeah. the Mississippi. Hey, I went bowling in, in honor of you. I heard about yeah. that. Yeah, so I, I went to this place. It's a It was a light Our bowling. listeners cannot wait to hear how yeah. well you did. So I got the bowling, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do. I'm gonna take this seriously. I'm going to do really well, right? So I got it and all this. I, I did the very first bowl, and I went, ow. And that you was did it. did the very first Yeah, ball. I went to the very first, my first roll. The terminology, what do you call your that? terminology yeah, is Tell me what do you me. call that. <laughs> anyway, so I did it and I couldn't get down. I couldn't get down. I didn't stretch. Are you supposed to stretch yes. before you pull? Oh, unless you want to pull something. You didn't tell me this. You're old. Yeah, listen, you've you been have sitting, to stretch. You've been sitting across from me this whole time and you've never told me that I need to stretch before I bowl. Well, well go bowling with me. I'll hook you up. I'll teach you what to do. I'm afraid to. Anyway, so I couldn't. I could. I I couldn't get down. So I started bowling. I was like, okay, like this your knee. Be your knee wouldn't bend, or back, your back. back. Well, you're not supposed to bend your back anyway. Well, then you didn't tell me how to bowl yet either. So anyway, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Bob, I don't know did, what I'm doing. Did you have a special ball, Pete, or did you get one from the place? Well, I first started with the six pounder. That was. <laughs> You found one that your thumb would and you shot put it all the way to the pins. <laughs> and then I got I went up and got the 12 pounders. So it was nice. I felt comfortable right there. 10 and 12 pounds. A little more you felt yeah. a little more manly with the 12 pounds. Yes, walk. yes. <laughs> so what ended up happening is I said, I can't bow for real. I need to bow for fun. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun. Okay, good. And so I was standing up and I was doing all kinds of dances and wiggles and all this kind of stuff and throwing it funny and all this stuff. And I got a 65. Wow. And then that same night or the night after you post that you average 226. Something like that. Yeah. And your high was like 248. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I posted, I said, wow, that was amazing. I did a 65. And then I said, and I posted on your thing. I said, that's the best I've done in two years. Because I haven't bowled in two years. Who bowled with you? Did Christine bowl with you? Yeah, she was What'd there. she shoot? Probably better than me. Everybody did better than me. Uh, Gustavo. That was kind of I, was I wanted to bring that up. My Gustavo and Gabriela. I'm they sure did like Christine 95. Did. Gustavo did 108, something like that. They all crushed you. You were uh, low, I was last. man. I was last out of the four. That's Both em- games. That's embarrassing. We are pulling your man card. I, I can't bend down. <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain. Your knees are getting old. It's not just the knees. I'm telling you. I was in a lot of pain. It was not joking. I've, but I had I've fun. seen Barry Bull. He can beat 65. Yeah, but I was not able to. <laughs> if, if the uh, if the side things are up, the bumpers. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure Pete didn't have bumpers. If he had bumpers, he would have shot more than 65. I, I did. A, I did a. I told uh, the lady that we were with, Gabrielle. I said, "Okay, I'm going to be serious now. This is like in the fourth or fifth pin, was, or what is it? Fourth or frame, fifth? frame, frame, inning. Thank you, Whatever. inning. And so I was like, I'm be serious, and I I did good. I did boom, boom, and I was like, oh, I got the spare, I got the strike, and whatever. I was doing good. And that's when you danced? Okay. Oh, no, I danced the whole time. But after the sixth frame or seventh frame, again, I can't move. I literally could not, I could not get into my bed. I took muscle relaxers and ibuprofen. I could not move. How many games did you My bowl? whole back was inflamed like no other. You bowled two games and you couldn't move. See, people don't think bowling is a sport until they actually go try to do it. I could not move. <laughs> you're doing five or six games. And then I watched Shannon do like t- 10 games in four days, 10 games each day. Now I heard that Bob drove like eight hours, bowl for like eight hours and then drove another eight hours. Something like that. Bob's I, just, I did. Anyways, it is. I'm, I'm let me just do this. I'm going to say this on the air. I believe bowling is a sport. I just said it. I think it's a sport. I think it's a sport that, it should be higher ranking than it is. Well, it can be. It can also just be a recreation. It just depends. I way of my body felt it's a oh. sport. And I and here's the other thing is like you're talking about competition. And I didn't have that in me when I was playing. I had fun. But I mean, literally, that's like some serious competition going on mentally, even everything. And then when you start talking about the strategy where they're putting oil down and all this other stuff, I don't know. I can't even comprehend it. So it's like, you know, people for the longest time would say golf isn't a sport. Come on. Yeah. It, you've never played golf before. True. It is a difficult, difficult. So sport. we're going to start our first annual Riot Podcast bowling tournament. Huh? As long as you allow me to have fun, <laughs> I have no problem with it. Well, it'll just be for charity or something. It'll, yeah. it'll all be for fun. Well, I was entertainment because I had a whole crowd of people <laughs> behind us were watching me. So <laughs> I put on a show. Oh, and I do have some video. Maybe we'll just do it. We'll just do a riot podcast from the bowling center. No, it's too loud. We won't be able to hear anything. You could do it at a time that nobody.
That'd be fun though. Yeah, we can open it up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Me neither. All right. Oh, all right. Are we good? Can yeah. We start. There was something else we wanted to talk about. Football puppies. Bear, puppy. We wanted to talk oh. about puppies. Yeah, Barry. You have a lot of puppies. He's got a house full of puppies. The most adorable little baby labs I've ever seen. Yeah, they are pretty cool. They're what five weeks old today? Yeah, they sure are. And if you want one, we'll sell it to you and we'll ship it anywhere in the world. Can we go anywhere in can the you world? Do that? We, we can. <laughs> well, I don't know. For sure, the United States. It's definitely international. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. The, <laughs> contact us. And we'll show you pictures of these puppies that they are, are amazing. They are adorable. We also have a Frenchie if you're interested. Two. Two Frenchies. Yeah. And we'll put them on Facebook. Oh. That's what we'll do. We'll put them on our Facebook channel. That'll be, that'll be and awesome. And people could say that they want it. We'll ship them to you. We'll fly them Delta. If they're cheapest. Why Delta? I don't care. I mean, yeah. Whatever the cheapest is. All right. You're paying for the flight though. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll get in there. All right. We're turning into a puppy store now. No, that's a good no, show. No, it is. They are adorable. And you the reason being look, is they- check out the pictures on Facebook. Riot Podcast. Um, at, on, at Facebook or is it Facebook.com? Yeah, the Riot Podcast. Yeah, you'll, find Riot Podcast. Yeah. you'll find it. Yeah. You'll find it. We're optimized now. So we're like in the front. So you'll find it. On the SERP. Everywhere. Awesome. All right, Pete, would you open us up in prayer? I can. Lord, I love laughing with these men and uh, just having fun and joking about our lives and making fun of ourselves. And Lord, be able to take them beating me up because I can't bowl. (laughs) And Lord, it's okay because we know that you love me and you know that you love us, period. And it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how good or how bad we are. It doesn't matter about any of that. Your love for us is perfect. It's infinite. It's pure, it's holy, it's unadulterated. And in order to that, we give you praise and give you glory. And so, Lord, take over this show, take over our thoughts. Lord, bless every listener. And Lord, may your word be anointed. And Lord, may your spirit be lifted high. We love you, God. We praise you, your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was all tongue-tied in my prayer there. Yeah, that's all right. Happens from time to time. It does. I bet you a lot of people that listen to us probably say, man, he gets tongue-tied a lot. But it's Not, okay. Well, they do now because you just brought it up. And it's okay because that's just, part of, that's just a part of my tongue tiedness. It's who we are. That's it. That's right. I can't change that. Last week, Pete. What? I have good hair too. I can't change that. <laughs> All right. So if you want to see Pete's hair, go to YouTube. Yeah. Otherwise. All right. Let's get just, serious now. Come talk. on now. Serious. Yeah, we're yes. in John 10. We're good. We're back in John 10. Yeah, last week yeah. we did the show called Why Do We Wander? Yes. I thought that was a pretty great show. It was a great show. Got a lot of shares. You know what got a lot of shares was our the uh, last show that Barry was on, the Creating God Moments. Yes. I got a lot of shares. Those, yeah. those uh, So shows. thank you. For those of you that are sharing the podcast with your friends and family, yeah. we, we really appreciate that and continue to do so. That's awesome. Testimonies are people really do get blessed by yep. listening to us craziness. But yeah, we do love Jesus and we talk about truth. You're going to set the record for saying crazy the most time in one show. That's crazy. That uh, right? right? Let's do it. All right. So anyway, it was a great show. We covered John 10, um, kind of the beginning of it, verses 1 through 13. And we highly, highly recommend, if you haven't heard last week's show yet, jump on to your podcast and download that show. Or even better yet, watch us on YouTube and then you really can see Pete's crazy hair. Today's show will be a continuation of last week's show and hopefully just as good as last week. I think we, so. You think so? Yeah. Well, I We're, think it might be even better. I think it's going to be better because on the we have the tricord. That's yeah. right. <laughs> we will pick back up in John chapter 10, starting in verse 14, and uh, all the way through the end of the chapter. We're going to finish yeah. it up. If you remember from last week's show in the first part of John 10, Jesus makes three declarations about himself. His first declaration is that he is the door. He used a a sheep pin illustration as a way to demonstrate that no one can come in unless they belong to the shepherd. Remember that picture we shared, Pete? Yeah. It was like the stone walls all the way around, and then there was the opening, and the shepherd would kind of just lay in front of that. That that opening. So you, you we have, covered that in details. If you go want to hear about it, really go back cool. Go back and listen yeah. to that show. The second yeah. declaration that he proclaimed was that he is a good shepherd and that his sheep know his voice. We didn't have time to unpack completely the proclamation thoroughly last week. So we will pick back up there where we left off in verses 14 through 21. Then we will end with his last proclamation that he is the son of God in verses 22 
through 42. Yeah, so, so quick recap. He, please, again, got Jesus is straight up talking to these Pharisees and these religious leaders, and he's telling them that he's the door. And so he's explaining to them, like, hey, you can't even get to the Father unless you go through me. So I'm the door. I'm there. You know, it's just, and he uses a good, you know, and then the good shepherd was, they understood what a good shepherd was. They understood what the shepherd was and that they takes care of the sheep. And the good shepherd is one that takes care of the sheep really well. And then, so we're going to finish up that part. And then he gets into, let me just, let me just play, uh, speak very plainly to you guys. I am God, you know, and so that we're going to finish up with that. And so he's going to tell these Pharisees exactly who he is. And so we're going to know. All right, let's go. Are you the Messiah, right? That's it. Are you? All right. Verses 14 and 15. Let's start there. Again, we're in chapter 10. Yeah. I am the good shepherd. I got lost. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Do you want me to go further on? No, we're just going we're just to stop. 15, just 14, 14 and 15. 14 and 50. There yeah. you go. So in the gospel of John, the word know here. So we looked it up. The know means much more than intellectual awareness. It speaks of the intimate relationship between God and his people. So the shepherd knows his sheep personally and therefore knows best on how to minister to them. Uh, if we are in relationship Jesus with Jesus, he knows our name and most likely has given us a new name. So we can never lose our identity in Christ. We, we can never get lost or run too far from him. Hmm. He knows us personally. Thoughts on that, guys, on Jesus knowing us? So, I mean, a lot of times people would read this and that they won't take in what that know. They'll just like, oh, he knows me, you know, that, whatever. But this is like, this is like going deep here. He, he knows everything about you. What the Bible says, what he knows, the your hair is on your head. You know, he knows everything about you. Bear? Yeah. You know, when I think of this word knowing, I, I think of two things. First of all, is that we can know him, you know, and he can know us. Amen. And, and when we know his heart, there's a trust that comes with that. Amen. And because we know his heart, we can trust him because we know that the shepherd has our best at mind and, and that he's going to take care of us because he's done it time and time again. He's led us to those green pastures. He's, he's killed the wolves and bears and lions, and he's taken care of us. So he's laid down his life. And because we as the sheep, we've seen him lay down his life. We can trust him. So that's a, that's a knowledge that is so close. And, and, you know, it makes me think Pete and Bob that, uh, one of my favorite passages is in First John five thirteen, and this is a passage that was shared the night that I got saved. And it says, "These things have I written unto you, so that you may know that you have eternal life." See, there is a eternal knowledge that we can gain from from uh, the Word and from fellowship with God, and and we don't have to have a hope so faith; we can have a know so faith. And so, so we know Him, and we can know that we know Him. And that that is a very special place. Well, and he's telling he's telling the Pharisees here that hey, I, I, this is like different. So I am Jesus. I'm standing in front of you. I am the Messiah. I've already told you. You've seen my miracles, everything else. But the ones that God has given me, I know them. And he's telling them straight up. I not only do I know them. I mean, I know them. I know everything about them. They're mine, and I love them, and I'm good. And so that's kind of the recap of it. And so as Barry was just saying, that brings us security, hope, and brings us a lot of joy. You know, you, the, oh. the passage that talks about he's gone through every experience, yeah. every temptation and trial so that he can know what we go through. Mm -hmm. He knows our trials. He knows our temptations. He knows our struggles. And man, the comfort that that brings me that, yeah. that he... He knows our persecutions. Yeah. He knows uh, our 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 uh, lack of security, our mm -hmm. lack of uh, you know uh, confidence in ourselves, and he knows all of that. But yet, he still loves us. And he here's the one that that blows my mind. He knows all my mess, and he still uses me. That's it. And that's that's just awesome. That is mind boggling. That's we talk awesome. about that a lot. Yep. You, our mess stinks too. You, you right. mentioned. Um, Something about, and I don't want to gloss over this because I, I I find this fascinating. I was hoping you would kind of share a little bit more on this, Pete. Um, he said, "Likely, most likely, has given us a new name." Yeah. What, he, what do you mean by it's that? It's like when I when I completely surrendered to the Lord. Um, it's like I and I always think of you know Cephas and how he became Peter and you know and he just he just gives people names. It's like he knew them. 
in a different way. It's like, you know, my dad calls me a certain name, right? My mom called me Petey. You guys don't call me Petey, but that's my name to my parents. There was a deeper intimacy there. It's something that I had. And I just feel like once we give our life to Jesus, he knows us by that name, whatever that name is, you know, it's like, it might, it might be just son or it just like, you know, it might be something hmm. that's something that's intimate that we have with the father. Again, this is a relationship we're talking about. This is not some distant God. This is a, this is a person that we speak to every day, all the time. And so God speaks to us in the language that we know. And he meets us where we need to be met because he knows us best. And he talks to us in the name that we both respond to. And, and, and that's the relationship. So with me, it's, it's, it's son a lot. He talks to me and my, you know, son, you know, and I hear that a lot. Wow. And um, so, yeah, whatever that is, God knows. Yeah. Bob. Excellent. All right. All right. Number two. Second thing the good shepherd knows is our nature. While all sheep are alike in their essential nature, each sheep has its own distinctive characteristics. And the loving shepherd recognizes these traits. One sheep may be afraid of high places, others a dark shadow. A faithful shepherd will consider these special needs as he tends to his flock. So that's kind of what you were just saying. Like yeah. he knows uh, so intimately. That's where you're like, oh, that he has a special name for me. And man, that that's really cool. But it's cool how... You know, although we're all stupid sheep, we, we all have our own characteristics. It's like God knows us before we even know ourselves. And it's, and it's for us, it's a lifetime of learning him. So we're learning him over a lifetime. But God already knows us before we even know ourselves. Mm. And so it's, it's just that process. And over time, we're learning more and more about him. And the more that we learn about him, the more we realize that he's always been there. He's never left us or forsaken us. He's always been guiding and directing and been there the whole time. Yeah, Pete and Christine, your your daughter's an incredible painter and, and drawer and very artistically talented. And I know, uh, Bob, you have some paintings that uh, are pretty special. You know, I think you have a painting that the, the artist hid his name in it several times. Is that right? Hid, hid Crystal's name in it. Oh, Crystal's name. Yeah. And... And yeah, that's right. I remember that now. And Crystal is Bob's wife and, and he talks about it a lot. But, you know, that artist that made something, he could tell us things about that art that we, we mm -hmm. can never know. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's some names you couldn't find unless the artist pointed them out. to you. Right. And, that's and cool. Faith can tell you, you know, details about her art that mm. we just don't see. When we're made by God, we know that we're made by him. And there's things that that are lying dormant inside of us that wow. have not been awakened, that he's put in us, wow. that he's He's waiting to develop. And, and the things that he knows about us intimately as the one who mm. wove us together. I mean, that's good. Th that's a, that's a pretty cool thought, right? Mm. It, to get to know myself, I got to get to know him. Amen. Wow, man, you just drew a really good picture. Pardon the pun, but that is a great way to look at it. Yeah, really wow. good. That's awesome. <clears throat> all right, let's go on to the next one. All right. Thirdly, we know all, uh, he knows all of our needs. Often we do not even know our own needs. It's Psalm 23, love Psalm 23, is a beautiful poetic description of how the good shepherd cares for his sheep. In the pastures, by the waters, and even through the valleys, the sheep need not fear because the shepherd is caring for them and meeting their needs. Yeah. You want to talk to that, Bob? Because it's you love Psalms 23. No, so I just I think there's just so much in there. And it's just like, yeah, yeah I should probably open it up because I don't have it memorized. But, um, you know, just, you know, bringing you to the water and laying you down in the in the green pastures and and protecting you from your enemies. And just he's he knows every one of your needs and your so but not just your needs, kind of your desires, too, and and your comfort and knowing that. And I heard a pastor describe that that, uh, you know, walking through the, through the valley where he was, he was pointing out the fact that, you know, there's, there's the sheep or there's not the sheep, but the, the, um, the lions or the wolves and people are trying to attack the sheep, but they won't come near them because the shepherd has, has the, the staff and, you know, he will protect them at, you know, at all costs. So even though they're walking through this tunnel or this valley, or, you know, they're vulnerable to, being attacked by the enemy, the shepherd is there protecting them. It's just I think, a beautiful picture. I think the hard part for Christians or just followers of Christ in general, our heart, it's hard for us to 
understand that he's meeting our needs when we're going through financial crisis or we're going through a real deep stretching. And one of the things that the Lord has done for me in those moments is he's taught me to simplify things. And meaning this, did I have a bed this morning to sleep in? Praise the Lord, he met my need. Did I, did I have food? Did, I, did my car turn over? You know, did it turn on? Did, do I have, you know, water this morning? Do I have electricity? And, and if you really start simplifying things, it's, it, you start realizing that God is meeting your needs and it's, and he's, and he's always there. He's always, even, even in the moments, like I was, I, I talked to a guy that was in a prison one time in a POW camp or something. And I said, it was dark and it was all that. I said, did you ever feel God was meeting your needs? He goes, well, I was, they still fed me. And I was like, you said that you felt that that was God. He goes, yeah, they could have chose not to feed me. And I was like, okay. And I said, what else? And he goes, well, in the midst of that dark time, I was able to worship him and he was able to comfort my heart and my soul and my mind. So he met my need in that moment and he got me through the night. And so it's, it's, it's that God meets us where we're at, whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation is, God knows, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll meet your needs some way, somehow. It might not be what you think or what you want, hmm. But if you let him be God of your life, you let him be the good shepherd, it would be perfect. It would be right. It would be holy. It would be exactly what you need. You know, it, he really does know our needs. And, you know, somebody out there needs to hear this, guys, that he cares about our needs. Mm. He really does. He wants us to have the things that we need. And, he, and as a father, just like us as fathers, he wants to make sure you have what you, you need. And man, that, that heart of God, I am challenged by, I'm overwhelmed by, and, and it makes, makes me want to trust him more. Mm -hmm. And, and when I sense that I have a need and I, and I, I have a tendency to run out and try to figure it out. I, I remind myself, and I think we got to <laughs> do this much as Christians, that it is him that meets that Amen. need. And, and our first need is to go to him instead of try to figure it out. I just think that's, that's important. Yeah. We want to rush him at times. We yeah. want to like, oh, come on, God, what are you waiting so long? You know, he's, he's slow sometimes to the party. He takes his time. He wants us to be still a little bit often. He wants that time of worship, that fellowship with us during that time of need, you know, but ultimately, I mean, when it, he will show up and when he does, it's just like, it's always yes and amen. And God, you are so good. God, you are so faithful. God, you are so perfect. And um, so anyway, all right. That was really good. good. As we press into Jesus more, we get to know him better. We come to realize that we never have to worry or fear for he is always watching out for Amen. us. Religion, here we go, Pete. <laughs> religion will never get you close to him. We must spend time with, with him in prayer and reading his word. Silent listening and meditating on his truth is needed to know him intimately. The good shepherd will never compete with what the world offers. He operates differently. Thank God. We have to understand that. Yeah. He, he's not like the world. He does not go with the ebb and flow of the world. If you want to meet Jesus, you need to spend time with him. You need to get away from the world. You need to get away from the circumstance. You need to get away from the noisiness of your life. And you need to find him in the stillness of your heart, in, the, in that quiet place, in that closet, or whatever that is. Because that is where he's going to meet you. And he's not going to meet you if you think you can figure it out on your own. If you're coming to God pompous, prideful, haughty mm -hmm. spirit, if you're coming to God like all proud, like you're good, like you've made it, you're not going to meet God because God doesn't operate that way. God looks at you from the opposite side. He wants a broken and contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. He wants a humble heart. And in that moment, you're going to meet a God that is so unbelievable. He's going to blow your mind. That's so good. I mean, how many times have I, you kind of picture God as like, Oh, this is, he, he was going to give me the best option of the, what the world has to offer. Like, no, it's a completely different, different animal. It is the opposite. It's he will not compete. <laughs> he will not compete. So Listen, good. remember the, the Bible verse where it talks about God's a jealous God. Yeah. Okay. He is jealous of your time. And if we're given our time to the world and we're given our time to other things that are not with him, he's jealous and he wants that intimacy and, and he'll allow circumstances. He'll allow things into your life. He'll allow those stretching of lack of need or certain things that are happening to get your attention so that he can get in contact with you. 
because otherwise we're too proud and too busy without him. Barry, thoughts? Absolutely. You know, I think of the Samaritan woman, how Jesus had to go out of his way to meet with her. That's exactly what God wants. Amen. He wants us to plan, uh, be excited about it and go out of our way to meet with him and be deliberate about it and honor him with our time. It, it, that's when he shows up. Not when I casual, okay, I got five minutes here <laughs> and it's very convenient for me. Right. Yeah. When the Samaritan lady, she was beat up, abused. I mean, that lady was at the end of a rope and her heart was broken. There's no doubt in the mind. I mean, he, God knew exactly that she was prime to hear the truth, to hear what was coming. And, and that is Jesus. I mean, she went out to man, but God looks at our hearts. If we're not coming with that mentality, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think some people don't really even know how to do that. I mean, it's like they, they try to do quiet time and then there's all this stuff that still goes in the head. They don't know how to be broken before God. They don't know how to just worship. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's like, you know, Paul says, we got to work out that salvation. We got to discipline our minds. We got to discipline things in order to, to get it to do what God wants us to do. It, it takes effort. We're not saying this is easy, but with that habit in our life, with the consistency of saying, God, I want to be in your presence. Holy cow. It's, it's amazing. I mean, we talk about this all the time on the show. There's nothing greater than being in the presence of a good God, good shepherd, period. You know, sometimes Pete, I have to use prayer to unpack what I'm carrying so that I can hear from him. Yeah. And how do you do that? You know, uh, we talk about laying things before the Lord and, you know, I have worries and cares and struggles. And, and so when I, I look at, when I come to the Lord, sometimes that I'm, I'm unpacking and I'm laying this down and I'm getting this off my chest so that I can be quiet in front of him to hear from him. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to unpack and sometimes you got to, and I, I don't know if y'all have experienced this, but sometimes he's the only one I can unpack with because nobody else understands. Oh, completely. And then and I, I think and this is a good, we need to keep talking about this because I just sense it, but there's moments too, where you're yelling. There's moments where you're angry. There's moments where you don't understand what's going on in your life. There's moments where the need is so great. You can't comprehend where God is at that moment. But if you are talking to God, no matter what state you're in, and you're coming saying, God, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and you're coming and saying, God, I don't get it. I don't understand why you do this. You're, wa you're talking with him. You're actually coming in a, in a, in a mindset that's like saying, God, I, I need help. God is faithful. And, and he wants you to come honest. He wants you to come in a way that's honest. And, and it looks different for all of us. I mean, I had, I remember moments like you were just saying, Barry, I remember Way back when, I remember being in my car yelling at the top of my lungs at God, yelling at the top of my lungs in my car. And at the end of that car ride was the most amazing, peaceful, joyful experience I've had in most of my life. Because God took me from that hurt, that pain, that anger, that lack of understanding, and he walked me through it in a gentle way that he knows my name and he knew it in such a way that I got to the end of that car ride and I was able to just breathe again. And that's the God that we have, you know, and it looks different, but we got to come a certain way. God's not showing up if we don't come a certain way. And that's got to be a broken way. It's really good. So I'm not the only one that's ever yelled at God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sure there's been lots. All right. Let's read. Um, let's read verse 16. Kind of break that down a little bit. Right. Um, 16, again, we're still in chapter 10. And I have the other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Yeah, I mean, if you just read over that as a Christian, you're like, wait, what is he talking about? Yeah, you could easily just glance right over What that. is that talking about? So, I mean, again, obviously he's talking about the fold is the Israelites and the other fold is the Gentiles. I mean, it's, it's everybody else. Yeah, yeah. It's everybody else that falls in line. And so, yeah, it, we don't want to just gloss that over. I mean, it's, we have to understand that the Gentiles are outside of the covenant. Okay. We are grafted in. We are the, the he's divine. We are grafted in we're the adopted ones. We're brought into the fold. The fold of the chosen ones have always been Israel. 
And so Jesus' flock is everyone, not just Jews. He died for the lost world. And his desire is that his people reach the lost world in the message of eternal life. And that's what he was telling them. That's what he's looking at the Pharisees straight up. And he said, listen, not only am I fold here in Israel, but my fold is everywhere. And they're probably like, what, dude? You're just smoking. They just couldn't comprehend him. They could not see the light. All right, let's go to the next one. Well, not yet. I, I got a question. So yeah. I, this just hit me. I probably should have studied, but it didn't hit me when I was reading over this. So it says they were outside of the covenant talking about the Gentiles. Yeah. Is this the, the Mosaic or the Abraham? Or what covenant are we talking about here? Well, God's chosen people. So it would be Mosaic, the, the law. Okay. It would be based off the law. Yeah. So, I mean, Mosaic law is, is what he's talking about, the okay. covenant. These cool. chosen people. Yeah. All right. Verse, where are we at? 17. Yeah. Let's read 17 through 21. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may, why do I keep losing my I eyes? love this my part. This eyes, is, my eyes are not working. But this is, there's kind of sarcasm here. I mean, think about it. He's looking at the Pharisees and he's telling for this reason, the father loves me. Yeah. Reminder, this is Jesus speaking. Well, what, what yeah. does he say to the Pharisees? I, I almost, it's almost like, it's almost like it, the father loves me, but not you. He doesn't love you. <laughs> I, it's almost like that. I mean, he's telling them straight up. I mean, he's kind of, he's laid it out for them so much. We've been covering this layout for, a, you know, five shows now. And it, again, here he is, but my, you know, the father loves me. It's this ongoing dialogue with the Pharisees. Yeah. All right. Go on. All right. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life and I, and I may take it up again. See, nope. again, he's talking to the Pharisees. You're not laying down your life. I'm telling you, there's two messages here. All right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. There was again a division, I guess there would be, a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, he has a demon and is insane. Why listen to him? <laughs> While others said, these are not the words of one who's oppressed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? I mean, it's got to be like it's so confusing for him because they're looking at this guy. He's authoritative. He's a tough dude. But at the same time, man, he's gentle and he's doing these miracles and he's loving on people. And he's like, people are following him and all this stuff. And they're looking at him and like, and listening to his words are like, dude, what is going on? I mean, they're just crazy. And then he's giving them these messages and these messages inside messages. And he's just talking to them and it's just blowing their minds and they just can't even comprehend it. But his, in his, and I just read our notes now, but I can go on and on. But his voluntary death was followed by his victorious resurrection. Amen. Jesus states here that the son has the authority to take it up, uh, take up his life again. He's basically stubbing his lips. And listen, you don't have the authority to take up your life again. I do. Okay. Let me just, let me explain this to you. So this statement caused division among the Jews. Since Jesus is the door, we would expect a division because the door shuts some people in and other people out. He is the good shepherd and the shepherd must separate the sheep from the goats. It's impossible to remain neutral about Jesus. I like that he, he's, he brings up the, the fact that he's voluntarily laying down his life because he knows that these are the guys that are going to kill him. Yep. But he's making it clear right now, like, yeah, only because I'm letting you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or allowing you. Well, and even that point I just made that he's the good shepherd, that the sh the door shuts for some people and leaves them out. I mean, it is what it is. He says, I, in John 17, I know my sheep. I know who they are. I know who are my chosen. And uh, there's some that are not going to be in. I don't know. Any other I thoughts? I think so. I think he also expresses incredible security in the relationship with his father. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the other messages behind this is that if you knew what I knew, of me and our relationship with the father, you would understand that yeah. what you have to say makes zero bearing on our relationship. Wow, so good. And uh, I think, I think, you know, he, he is being sarcastic. Uh, the father loves me. I have that relationship. It, I am secure in that relationship. If only you could have that. Yeah. You know, I want that for you. Oh, yeah. I have come that you would have that if you would only choose it and see the truth that stands before you and that walks before you and that is before you. See the truth that I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And that there is good in what I'm doing here mm -hmm. and, and that there is a different plan. There is a different system that you don't know about. They, 
they are living underneath the hand, the heavy hand of the law and they are not free and they, because they are not free. They are enslaving everybody else. And, and Hmm. Jesus said, is saying, Hey, if you understood who's, whose sheep you are, I, there's you, I, I got to talk about that. Cause that was just so powerful. Um, the first thing is the security part. Um, it, it's when we are walking in fellowship with Jesus and we have that intimacy with him, the boldness that comes from it, we, it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter how much they want to slam you. You, your confidence comes from the love of the father. I can tell you the father loves me and I know it because I have that fellowship with him. And so, man, and, and he had that intimate knowledge of, fa- of the father that that's boldness. And then the second part was the long suffering of Jesus. He could have given up on these guys and he kept talking. He kept giving them, like you were saying, opportunity after opportunity. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And he, he didn't. He could have just moved on. Yep. All right. Let's move I, on. I, we talked about oh. that before, but it just blows my mind that these Pharisees, I mean, they're like, they're living in the law, but they're expecting the Messiah. I yeah. mean, they're looking for the Messiah, but, and he's sitting right in front of them and they just can't, they can't see it. And I like how chosen the, the, the show chosen, they, they made it in the chosen. If you've ever seen it, they made it feel like the people were already expecting the Messiah to come. Mm-hmm. And so the, the anticipation was there. And you got to remember, they know that they didn't, they have not had a prophet for like 400 years. They know that there's been silence there. And so they're expecting a prophet. They're expecting something soon. And then Jesus shows up. So it's like, it's almost like God, you know, with John the Baptist, with everybody else, but it's almost like he sent this, this spirit ahead of time to prepare the way to ahead of time. So people were getting ready to, you know, to receive that he was coming. So who knows? All right, let us, let's move into Jesus's final declaration, that of being the son of God. The events in this section occurred about two and a half months after John 10, 1 through 21. John put them together because both of these messages, Jesus uses the imagery of the shepherd and the sheep. The yeah, this first, is another thing that if we didn't study it, we wouldn't know that it's two and a half months later. But when you actually look at the timeline, you start studying it, you're like, whoa, wait, this is not the same time. So, all right. As, as they talked about, well, you'll yeah. see it right here in verse 22. Yeah, yeah. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Yeah. So that, is that the 24? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So let's just talk about that. So I'll, let me, I'll just give it a little brief because de- people will probably know what is this festival of dedication? It's basically Hanukkah. So everybody has heard of Hanukkah before. And well, most people are. So the Feast of the Lights. Um, it takes place in December. Uh, it's near the time of Christmas, our t- Christmas. You know, the feast commemorate, commemorates the, the rededication of the temple by Judas Mac, Maccabeus, Maccabeus in 164 BC. Say that 10 times. Um, after it was desecrated by the Seleucids of the Syria. Um, so the Seleucids of Syria were, um, if I remember history right, it was during the Hellenistic time. So it was after Alexander Great died and before Roman Empire took over. Okay, so after Alexander the Great died and before Roman Empire took over, there was a Hellenistic period. There were Greeks that basically were ruling. And so the the Seleucids of Syria were those Greeks. Okay, so they were fighting against Israel. They were controlling and occupying Israel. And Judas Maccabus was uh, was the son of the high priest Mattathias at that time. And, and then he would then raise up an army to fight against them. And so he was able to drive them out. And that's kind of where they now set up the temple. And so in remembrance of them setting up the temple again so they can worship because he set them free from that, they now celebrate Hanukkah. Does that make sense? So that's all the Maccabees and the festival <clears throat> lights and all of that stuff. So that comes from that good time. history lesson, Pete. I yeah. like that. Yeah. And so the Hellenistics were from 30 or 63 BC to about 312 BC. So it starts 312 to 63. So that's it. And then I think the Romans started in right around that time, 64. 
for right around that time is when the Romans came Occupation. in and started occupying the rest of the part. Yeah. So there you go. So that's, you find a lot of that in first Maccabees eight, 17 through 20. I wrote that down too. Joseph, Joseph has talked about them as well. And so it was 164. So that's only 200 years within 200 years of history that they're now celebrating this. Got it. All right. All right. Well, let's finish up the book. All right. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name, bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. Mm. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them. I have shown you many good works from the father. Which of them are you going to stone me for? I love that. The Jews answered him, it is not for good work. It's not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. Mm. Jesus answered them. It is not, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? Because I said, I am the son of God. If I am not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I am in the father. Again, they sought to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. He went away across the Jordan to a place where John had been baptizing at first, and there he remained. And many came to him, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed him there. Ah, oh, geez. I mean, there's a lot. We can probably, we can hunker down here in a lot, but we're going to just briefly go over this, but how many times does Jesus have to remind them who he is? I mean, it's, it's constant and it's over and over again. And, you know, I, I look at my life uh, when I walked with the Lord and he had a constant remind me over and over again of who he was. And I finally, one day I said, fine, I, I give in. That's kind of what he's doing here. He's long suffering. We talked about that, but he said something at the very beginning that kind of got my attention here. He said, they were not his sheep. Um, so, from the human standpoint, and I, and I wrote this in my thoughts, he said, from the human standpoint, we become his sheep by believing, okay? But from the divine standpoint, we believe because we are his sheep. And so if you really think about that, it's kind of mind boggling. It's a mystery to try to comprehend how this all works. And so here's Jesus laying that out. And if they really just stopped and, and thought about it for a second, like, what did he just say? So they're not my sheep but you already know your sheep before they're their sheep. And we have to, in order to be your sheep, we need to believe, but wait, what? It's kind of, it's that whole God is outside of time thing. Cause God created time. He can't be confined by time, right? It's a mystery that it's hard to fathom if we really start thinking about it. Our but brains we, just don't Because he's, <laughs> he's human. He's, he's fully God and he's few, uh, fully man. And so he already knows yes, tomorrow. And the Bible tells us that God goes before us. So if God is going before us, our job is to follow him. He's already ahead of us. So our job is, as he would always tell the people, have eyes to see and ears to see. So are you looking and seeing what God is doing ahead of you? And if you are, then you'll follow him. But if you're trying to do it your own way, then you're not looking to see what God is already doing. And so that just blows your mind to think about. Well, wait, I have the choice to do what I'm going to do tomorrow? Well, yeah, you still have the choice, but God is already for you, before you. God has already prepared the way. Are you in fellowship with him? Are you in concert with him in such a way that you can see and know what God is doing ahead of you? And are you able to follow him and join him? Are you just, your mind's blown, right? Yeah. It's pretty, it's amazing right here. But Jesus just dropped that, right? Well, now. that's where people will be like, well, then we don't have free will. Like, yes, you do have free will. He just already knows what you're going to decide. That's how I wrap my head around it, I guess. That's how maybe I can try to understand. I, I just don't think we can. But, I mean, most times when we read this section, we'll pass over that statement and we'll never do what we just did. But when I read, I was like, whoa, let's talk about that for a second, because it's mind boggling. Yeah, it, it's, it's a deeper level of thought 
that God knows perfectly and that we are finite and he's infinite and he knows all that. Like you were saying, Bob, he's, he's sovereign. And I put a verse to that, Romans 11, 33 to 36. I said, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are the judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For, him, for from him and through him and, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. So I mean, there it is. Uh, who, knew, who knows? But just praise the Lord. In some circles, they call it foreknowledge. Right? Yeah. That um, I really don't believe that God created some people to have a relationship with him and some people to not have a relationship. I think he created everyone to have a relationship. That's why we're here. But he knows whether or not we're going to choose him or not. And that is sad. But, but, you know, here's the encouraging part. He keeps giving these Pharisees and Sadducees opportunities, right? And over he says, and over. can you not see the evidence? You know, and that's what he's saying in this part of the passage. Look at my works. Look at my fruit. It speaks for itself. Have you ever seen any other man heal the blind? Have you seen any other man walk on water? Have you seen any other man have the wisdom that I have? So is it blasphemy when I say that I come from the Father and I understand the Father's heart and that I am of the Father and that the Father knows me and I know the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, are those things blasphemous? When when I am truth in the flesh, I am the Messiah. And that's the question, right, that leads them to, to saying this. Just tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? And he says, I have. You guys just don't get it. <laughs> and, and not with words. I've shown you with my life these the, the difference that, that the way I live and that works themselves, they speak for itself. It's, it's like, you know, we get a lot of hate on, on Riot Podcast Facebook sometimes and people just bash on us and they just call us fairy tale believers or yep. whatever. How could you believe all that stuff? And it's the same thing with the Pharisees. You, you know, there's a, there's a certain heart out there that has completely, completely closed their mind and their heart off from God. And they just refuse to listen. But it doesn't stop God from sharing this truth. It doesn't stop us from sharing the truth. And, and here's what you said it best, Barry. At the very end of what we just read just now, it said many believed. And, and we don't know, yep. but we know God loves them. Yep. And we're not going to stop sharing God's truth with people because God knows his sheep. God knows who are his. And so... Our job is to love them. Our job is to point them to him. And it's God's job to deal with them. So that's it. Well, you were going to just say something, no? Well, I, uh, I, was, I was thinking this thought that there's some people listening to this that they think they're not chosen by God. You know, we have run against some people recently saying, well, I could never go in there. God would never forgive me. God would not. Yes, he will. Yeah. Any, no matter what stage you are in life, no matter where you're at, if you would humble yourself and seek the face of God and ask him to reveal himself to you, he will. I'll put my name on that one. Well, Jeffrey Dahmer gave his life and he's the guy that ate, ate people, right? Killed him and ate him. And he gave his life to the Lord and his completely, his whole life was transformed. Dr. James Dobson went into the prison and actually interviewed him and talked to him. He came out and said that he's really changed. He's, he's really given his life to the Lord. So, I mean, here's a guy that had so much hate, so much evil in him. I got to do it, man. Now, here's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, come on. Something else. I, All right. I'll change the topic just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one verse really jumped out at me. And it's kind of, it's, to me, it's kind of comforting. Uh, it, it's verse 28. It says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And then here, here's the part that's really, I mean, that's obviously awesome news. But here's this next part. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. Yeah. Like once you're in the fold, you're one of the sheep. It, and that brings now the other discussion. Okay. So how, what do we say to those that have given their life to the Lord, but now you look at their life and there's no evidence of, of walking with the Lord at all. I mean, I, unfortunately, I know a lot of this, a lot of these people, um, or they give their life to the Lord, but there's, there's no fruit whatsoever, none. 
They claim to be a Christian, but there is no lifestyle that's reflecting that of a Christian. It's just, they're not light. They are exactly like the world. Well, and maybe it's just head knowledge. You know, they, well, they, well, they think they gave their life, but they never really did. Well, that's the point yeah. is, is what are they Christian? You know, they, they profess in their mind. So if you ask them straight up, do you believe in Jesus that he died across and rose again? On the third day? Yes, absolutely. I, I did that. I've done it 15 times in my life. I believe that with all my heart. But there's, there is no, nothing that shows in their lifestyle. They're foul mouth, they're this, they're that, everything. Everything is the exact same as the world. Are they saved? God knows. He, he does know. But, but the, the, the testament is what he's making with these people. Is a sheep follow the shepherd's voice? These people are not following the shepherd's voice. So now the question is, can we now say that, are they saved or not saved? I would say they're not. I don't think they know the Lord at that moment. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm saying. I say it's not my call. That's what, oh, 100%, 100%. That's, way, that's the way I answer. I can't say 100%. if no man, any man's saved. I can say that I am yeah. because I'm standing on, on the truth of God's word. But uh, if, if, I, I could testify to this, Pete and Bob, that I walked down an aisle when I was 15 and there was no change. And, and after really being confronted with the gospel, I, I felt like I needed to get saved and because there was no fruit. And so at 21 years old, when I was really confronted with the gospel, do I know that I know that I know uh, I gave my life to Christ and there was a change? Well, I mean, if that's a hundred percent, I believe that, but I mean, what I'm, I'm talking about is someone give their life to the Lord and it's 30 years later, I look at their life. There is zero, yeah. zero fruit. There's no coming back to God. Yeah. So I, my heart, what I'm sensing, and again, we're, we're all on the same page. There's no way to know. God only knows their heart. God only is, is the answer. Thank God is not us. Right. But I, the, the good, the people, God's sheep know his voice. Absolutely. And there's, that's the, that's the key here is the good shepherd knows his sheep and the sheep are the ones that follow the God's voice and you are following him. And there's no way you could be the same. Nope. You come in, you come into contact with the good shepherd. There's no way you're the same. Your well, life that's what is different. Corinthians 5, 17 says, yes, exactly. once you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Old, Old things have passed away. New things have come. And what is that new thing? Uh, <laughs> I put it this way that when you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit produces fruit in your life and yeah. there, and that fruit is change. So if, if uh, you walk down an aisle, you said a prayer and there is no change, you may have a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what we don't want you to have. And uh, if you're questioning whether or not you're saved, you know what you should do? You should get saved. Amen. Exactly. And don't talk to that in a second, but here, here's the, here's the thing. If you're listening to this and you're honestly listening to this, I would say that you're saved because the person that I'm talking about right now is a person that does not even care to listen to something like this. Yeah. They don't even have it. They gave their life to the Lord, but they, they will never go to church. They will never want to listen to this. They, they have might, no desire of the things they win. No hunger. Yeah. They wouldn't, yeah. they yeah. would, they would do that. But, but there's somebody that's sitting here that really has not actually made the proclamation of saying, I believe, and I want to. Well, if you're listening to this, that means that your heart is being pricked. And that means that God has prepared you and that you are his sheep. And Barry can talk to you to be, to be secure into that. So go ahead. Yeah. I desire is that you would know him. That's the bottom line. And that you would not only know him to, enough to get into heaven, but that you would know him enough to be able to be intimate and celebrate him. And, and uh, if the Holy Spirit, if something's going on inside of your life right now, and you, you are questioning, do I really know God? Do I really have a relationship with him? You know, that was a point I came to in my life. And this is what I did. I came before God and I, in John 1, 12, it says to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave right to become children of God. James 2, 19 says, even the demon believe in shudder. I believed in God and I believed in Jesus dying for my, my sin, but I don't believe I ever received him. So I, I want you to ask yourself, do you believe and have you received? 
And if you have not received, let's do that right now. Let's, let's receive him as your Lord and Savior. And to receive him as your Lord and Savior, you must admit, believe, and confess. And admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for you as your, your payment for your sin, that he was buried, that he rose again. And then confess him as Lord, the boss, the authority over your life. And let's pray. And you could pray something like this, dear God, I realize that I am selfish and that I've lived life my own way and that offends you. And I want to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me for living life my way and, and with selfishness and doing my own thing. And God, I, I realize that my sin has a penalty and your word says that it's death and eternal death, not just ceasing to exist. I pray, God, and thank you, God, that you sent your son to die on my behalf to pay my penalty on the cross, and that he's done that because he was the precious, pure son of God without sin. And uh, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the only way to heaven through your sacrificial death. And I believe you were buried and I believe you overcame the grave that God, the father raised you from the dead and that you are alive. And because you are the one who died for me, because you are the son of God, because you are who you say you are. I ask you to come into my life and sit on the throne of my life and reign and live your life through mine. I confess you as my Lord and savior. And I invite you into my life right now in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah, if that was you, we would love to hear from you. Go on to riotpodcast.co and, and go to that know God section up at the top and click on that and just fill that out and, and let us know that you gave your life to the Lord and we would be in contact with you and help get you started in your walk with the Lord and the Bible tells us that uh, now go and tell somebody, right? So if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my father in heaven. But if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father in heaven. So if you've given your life to the Lord, go tell your family, Amen. go tell your friends, go tell us, go tell everybody. And, uh, and the Bible also says that if you did do that, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing Amen. and we're Amen. rejoicing with you. So Bob. Awesome. Well, as always, you know, check us out on our social media sites, The Riot Podcast at Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you share, like, and follow, and uh, jump onto our YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe to that. Click the little bell so you're notified every time a new episode comes out. And uh, man, we would love it if you would just share that and comment in, in, in there as well. And we'd love to hear any questions you have. Um, if something came up in the show today you didn't understand or you just want to know more about, reach out to us, man. We'd love to, we would love to answer those questions for you so uh great show guys love hanging out with you guys and getting to talk in the pre the pre-show and the, actually doing the show it's just an amazing time yeah. i love it it's 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 like worship for me yeah, I, I really really me enjoy too. it so thank you guys and listeners thank you for listening thank you for sharing the show man send it to somebody that uh <laughs> you know you maybe you don't even know if they'll even enjoy it or not but find out yeah. share it share it with a friend share it with a neighbor be blessed. Bye. Hey, it is so good to be on here with you guys again. And, and thank you to our listeners for, for being a part of this. God bless you. Yeah. Bye, guys. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.